morning everybody or at least morning here it is bright and early and i need to feed everybody all the fuzzy animals their breakfast so i thought i would bring you along and show you what everybody gets to eat in the morning but before we get started welcome back to my videos if you're new here my name is amanda i'm the owner of amanda's exotic animals and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my video so to start off i'm gonna prepare the bird's food yeah dancing i have two parrots this is penny the 53 year old african gray and i also have a 30 year old goffins cockatoo these guys get fed first coco sometimes screams until she gets fed in the morning isn't that right so they are first on the priority list and I actually pre-make their food. So I'm gonna go get that. So the main staple for my birds is Topps organic pellets. I bought like a massive bag of this and they always have access to it. So this is what I make for them. It's essentially a whole bunch of vegetables and legumes ground up into really small pieces. So they can't tell what they're eating. And then I put them in these containers and I freeze a bunch of them and then I just pull them out and I do like week by week. I think this container lasts about a week for them. Maybe a little bit longer. It kind of depends too on how full I have the containers. But they do actually really like that stuff, but in order to get them onto this, I had to mix in a bunch of seeds. I actually usually buy the brand that is like no sunflower seeds, healthy daily seeds, or it says something like that. Um, but I just ran out, so I happen to have this one in the cupboard. I'm not a huge fan of this one. It's more of like treats. Um, but since I don't have the other ones today, they're gonna, it's gonna have to be okay. And they just get like a little bit. Things like sunflower seeds, and there's some bigger nuts in there too, actually, that I don't put in here. Um, they are more so treats for your birds. They can be really fattening. So that's why I specifically buy the seeds that are no sunflower seeds and just some of the healthier seeds that are okay to feed every day. But still, I limit their portions to mainly vegetables, um, lots of pellets. And I sometimes like to add some bee pollen. They really like it. Um, I've read that it can be pretty good for them. Not too much, just a little. And I'm not gonna add it today because I added it just a couple days ago but I also give them some clay. Um, Paris in the wild eat some clay. Um, you can read on here, there's a bunch of like benefits to it. Anyways, I'm not gonna add that today, but sometimes I do, so I just wanted to include that. I'm going to stir this stuff together, get them to eat everything. Penny's pretty good, she loves to eat her food. Coco likes to eat 80% of her food and then throw 20% on the ground, so okay. <laughs> For treats, of course, like those seeds, nuts, things, um, even fruits, they're really good. But I also find these Nutri Berries are a massive hit. There's actually none left in here. This is the last container. I just have like some, some remnants of it. Um, so that could be like a little foraging treat. But I find that they love them and they're pretty good for them. I mean, they have fruit in it, but fruit's good as long as it's not like overdone. Next up is Bandit, my ferret. She's gonna be going crazy. Cause she's like, please, mom, give me my breakfast. For her, she got raised by somebody else and they fed her this like ferret food. Um, ferret food isn't actually the best for ferrets, like kibble. They are supposed to eat raw meat, like they're carnivores, but she's really hooked on this stuff and it's been really challenging getting her off of it. Um, she just doesn't like raw meat as much. She doesn't like raw meat at all, actually. I I'll show you what I do. So I still give her some of this so she doesn't starve. And what I do is I use it as like a treat. So I put it in this little ball and I have like a little toy scavenging foraging box in, in her enclosure. And it's got like a bunch of balls in it and some hay and some fun things. And this, as she rolls it, the food comes out. So this keeps her not only occupied for hours, but it's a way that it kind of discourages her almost from eating her old food, yet still gives her her old food so she's not starving. Genuinely plays with that for like hours every day. But what I feed her now as her like main diet is these Stella and Chewy's, they're freeze dried raw meats. So there's a couple different types in there. Um, you'll have to do a little bit of research on ferret diet. They need 
um, bird, they need rodent, they need um, bunny, um, you can get fish, you can get like a whole bunch of different stuff. Today I have, I think this one is some chicken. So I just need a couple of those. And then I believe that this one is rodent. She's sitting on my knee. She's like, please, let me have it. I also add just a little bit of water um, to her food because it's common that ferrets just don't get enough liquid. So I add just a little bit extra to make sure that she stays as healthy as she can considering she's a really old ferret and I didn't raise her on this diet. So we're doing our best. Next up is the chinchillas. So for them, they get in this big bucket some oxbow pellets. But then I also have a ridiculous amount of like other foods and treats for them. So I have this little dig basket. It's got some wooden toys in here. It used to be more full and then throughout the week or do one like once a week. They chew it apart, tear it up, and that's exactly what it's meant for. So I'm glad it's getting used. Every day or two, I will put just a little bit more treats and excitement in here. So this one's chamomile. They love this stuff and it's really hard to get out of here. So it keeps them busy for a while. So I love it. And we know that they love their big treats as well. So I break these in half, there we go. And then I just put a couple in there for them because I love them, so. And some of this little chinchilla treat mix. There we go. Lots of fun, lots of fun things for them to eat. Um, but yeah, in general, they eat this. And then of course they have constant access to hay. This is their enclosure. You can see the little hay basket, so. So up next, I have my hedgehogs. And right now I have the food in here, but it is the Vita Prima Hedgehog Diet. Um, my hedgehogs were actually raised on cat food. So they love cat food. They weren't such a huge fan of this at first. I mixed them together for a while. I did the same kind of idea um, with the forage basket and the cat food. But now they're happy eating this. I have two of them, it's just one of their bowls. They are still rather new to me. I'm still getting a hang of their diet, all the things that they can eat, what I can give them, like treats. I breed all sorts of bugs for the reptiles, so it's not hard for me to include like mealworms or anything like that. But a varied diet is always good, and even if this is a good staple, I still like to be adventurous and give them as much as I can. Plus, I'd like to find some healthier treats than cat food for their forage bin. But yeah, hedgehog diet, pretty simple. Next up is Simon the rabbit. This is not my rabbit. Um, this actually belongs to one of my close friends. He's a lovely boy and she's just moving her apartment right now. It's taking a couple weeks. So for right now, he's living here. He is currently in this cage, but don't worry. She knows better. This is not his home. He has a great pen. Um, but here I didn't have space for his pen, so he's currently just in this cage, but he's just getting boarded. But I thought I would include him because he's such a good boy. He's so cute. All right, let's make you some breakfast, pretty boy. So of course, bunnies need a constant access to hay. So he has a litter box in the back and it is pretty well filled with hay every day. Um, they also get all sorts of vegetables, sometimes fruits. And for this guy, he gets just some rabbit pellets. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I don't have a rabbit. I'm not a rabbit expert. Um, so yeah, take everything I said with a grain of salt. I know a little bit about rabbits, but yeah, again, I had one when I was a kid and I was a kid, so. I also have four pet rats. I breed feeder rats um, and I decided to make four of them pets to include in my educational presentations. Rats are so smart, they can make amazing pets. They're literally like a miniature dog. You can train them, you can really bond with them, all these great things. So I wanna be able to show that to people. They're also a more affordable pet. I mean, the cage is expensive. Of course, these critter nations are like 200, 300, even more than that um, per cage. But once you have their setup bought and everything like that, then it's basically just feeding them and actually buying the rat. You could probably find one for free, um, if not just like five, $10. And for them, I actually feed them mainly uh, like compost. So certain things, of course, rats can't eat, like grapes aren't good for them. Um, but we make a list, me and my mom and 
all of our friends pretty much we have like a rat food bin and they deliver it to me and it basically comes with a bunch of people food all their scraps but everything that rats can eat they also do get some um like rat kibble it's kibble Right now, I'm actually going to give them the rest of this um, like chinchilla diet that I have uh, because it doesn't all fit in the container. <laughs> so I'm sure they'll enjoy that probably as well. Next on the list to feed this morning is my little micro squirrels and they have a super varied diet as well. Um, so it kind of changes day to day what they eat. But one of my favorite staples is Crested Gecko Diet. I have to order more. Well, I did order more. I should get here today. I usually give them the Crested Gecko Diet like every day or two. And then every day I add in something new. So sometimes it's like seeds. Sometimes it'll be insects, um, a fruit, um, lots of different things. So let's put them back and feed them their breakfast that they're not going to eat till tonight because they're nocturnal and they hate being woken up during the day. Last on my list of things that I have to feed in the morning is my dwarf hamsters. And I feed them these Oxbow Essential pellets. Just like these guys, since they're dwarfs, it takes them forever to go through many of these. So I've had this bag for months. And then I also feed them, this is their old diet before I got them, um, which again has still lasted months. Um, it's like corn, sunflower seeds, uh, these other seeds that I don't know what they are, and pellets. I hand feed them this, so that's how I got them used to me. And so now they come running up to me anytime they see me because they think I'm going to give them some treats, so that's kind of fun. And I also like to feed them some odd like vegetables, so if I ever have some scraps or if I'm just cutting up something and I have a little bit left over, I mean they're very very small so they only get like a teeny tiny little bit, but they tend to really enjoy it and again I really like the varied diet. So now everyone's happily enjoying their breakfast as they should. Remember, if you do end up getting any of these pets, definitely you can use this video as one of your resources, but absolutely do so much research on diet. Diet is so important. And aside from that, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed feeding all the animals with me. And until next time, guys.